Question 8 from the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination of the SQA from Section 2. A water rocket consists of a plastic bottle partly filled with water. Air is pumped in through the water and when the force is great enough the tube detaches from the bottle. Water is forced out of the bottle which causes the bottle to be launched upwards. You can see a diagram of what's happening. And we've done this experiment in our school laboratory or even outside in a school playground. At launch, the air in the bottle is at pressure 1.74 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. Now for two marks, part A, it says on the diagram below, and this is the diagram here of the bottle, on the diagram of the bottle show all the forces acting vertically on the bottle as it is launched. You must name these forces and show the directions. So it's not good enough to just name the forces. You must draw in the forces and always draw them like vectors. Well, we take a look at the bottle. The bottle is sitting like this. And as we know, the bottle has got a mass. And all masses on the planet Earth will have a force acting downwards. And that's called the weight. So that's the weight which is caused by the force of gravity pulling the bottle down towards the centre of the Earth. Now the water rushing out the neck of the bottle when it's launched provides an upwards force which we call the thrust and we can show that arrow like that and that's the thrust there. So there's your two marks. The thrust vector is pointing upwards, uh, forcing the bottle upwards and the weight vector, if you can think of it that way, is pointing downwards. So thrust and weight are the two forces acting vertically on the bottle as it's launched. Question 8 continued, Part B. The area of water in contact with the pressurised air in the bottle is 4.50 times 10 to minus 3 metres squared. And for three marks, we've got to calculate the force exerted on the water by the pressurised air at launch. Well, the minute you see pressure, force and area, you know right away the equation we're going to use is pressure is going to equal to the force divided by the area. Now we know the pressure already, the pressure we're told at the beginning of the question is going to be 1.74 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. Now remember 1 pascal is going to equal to 1 newton metre squared. Now I'm writing like that to show you that it's going to be a force over an area. So 1 pascal is 1 newton per metre squared. So we're asked to find the force exerted on the water by the pressurised air at launch so we've got to find the force that's what we're looking for but we do know the area because it tells you the area is going to be 4.50 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters squared so we've got to arrange to find the force and as you can see from the diagram the force is on top here so to get the force on its own we must multiply both sides by the area a so if we do that, we get pressure times the area, and that's going to get rid of the area in the bottom over here to give us the force. So the force is the pressure times the area. So let's plug in the numbers in. So force is going to equal to pressure times area, 1.74 times 10 to the power 5. And I'm going to write it as Newton meter squared to show you the units cancelling out here. Multiply by the area, and the area is 4.50 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters squared. So you can see if we multiply these two numbers together, the meters squared and the meters squared cancel, and we're left with the unit of newtons, which is force. So we do that in our calculator, we get an answer of 783, and the unit says newtons. So the force will be 783 newtons. Question 8, part C. At launch, the air in the bottle has a volume of 7.5 times 10 to minus 4 metres cubed. At one point in the flight, the volume of air in the bottle has increased by 1.2 times 10 to minus 4 metres cubed. During the flight, the temperature of the air in the bottle remains constant. So for four marks, we've got to find or calculate the pressure of the air inside the bottle at that point in the flight. Well, let's take a look at the bottle at the beginning of its flight. There it is there. And we do know the pressure of the bottle, the air in the bottle, is going to be 1.74, as we've told us in the previous question, 1.74 times 10 to the power 5 pascals.
and we're told also the volume of the air in the bottle at the launch is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 metres cubed. So at some other time during the flight, the bottle's pressure and volume will change. Now we're after the second pressure, so we'll have to put a question mark there. Now what about the second volume? Well, we're told that the volume of the air in a bottle was increased by 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 4 metres cubed. So the new volume of air is going to be that here. It's going to be 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 metres cubed, plus how much is increased by? And it's increased by 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 metres cubed. So that's going to be the new volume of the air. And when you work that out in your calculator, you know the new volume is going to be 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4 metres cubed. So that's the new volume of air. So we have the pressure 1, we have the first pressure, we have the first volume, we have the second volume, and we have to find that volume, that pressure there, that second pressure. So what equation are we going to use then? Well, if we drag over our data sheets and place it here, we can see that we have a, a few equations to deal with pressure. First of all, we'll get that pressure equals force over area at the top. Then we have P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Now that's the one we're going to use because the rest of them have got temperature involved in them. And we're told that during the flight, the temperature remains unchanged. So the equation we're going to use is that one there, which is ringed, is P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So we can take away our data sheet now and write down the equation we're going to use. And the equation we're going to use is P1, pressure before, times V1, is going to equal to P2 times V2. And that's going to be our equation we're going to use. Now we're going to try to find P2, so we have to do the following. We have to make sure that we have P2 on its own, which means we have to divide each side by the second volume, V2. So our equation will look like this then. So P1 times V1 divided by V2 on the left-hand side, and if you divide by V2 here, you get P2 on its own. So if we put in our numbers now for P2, P2 equals P1, which was this one up here, is 1.74 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. We'll just leave out units for the moment. And that's going to be multiplied by volume 1, which is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And I'm going to divide that by the second volume. And we've got the second volume here, which is 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4. So 8.7 times 10 to the minus 4. Now we do that in our calculus, we find out that the second pressure is going to become 1, 5, and it's going to be 4 nothings after that, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be, be 150,000 pascals. Remember the unit for pressure is pascals. You can change that into standard form uh, by saying, well, we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can say it's 1.5 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. That will be the final pressure. Question 8C continued part 2. Using the kinetic model, explain what happens to the pressure of the air inside the bottle as the volume of the air increases. Now the kinetic model explains to us what happens when particles in a gas move about quite randomly. And these particles are considered to be very small and the space between them to be considered a lot bigger than the actual size of the molecules. Now to see what happens when we change the volume of a container without changing the temperature, let's go over to the PHET physics simulation site and see what we can simulate. Well, here we have got a bottle, and we, well, we pretend it's a bottle, and inside the bottle is full of air, and it's at a certain pressure. And you can see the particles are all randomly moving about. 
Now these particles are going to be colliding with the walls of the container. And we can actually count the number of collisions which happens with the walls at this certain pressure. So we start a little timer off. It's going to time over a small interval of 10 picoseconds. Now don't worry about that. That's just a unit of time, a space of time. So let's see how many calculations take place, how many collisions take place in 10 picoseconds. We'll start the clock. Now there's 277 collisions with the walls every 10 picoseconds. So imagine that to be 277 collisions with the walls every second. Now every time the particles collide with the walls, then what they do is they impart a force on the walls. And therefore there's going to be a force imparted on the walls every second, depending on the number of collisions. Now, that gives rise to a pressure on the walls because we know that pressure is force over area. Now, let's see what happens. Just remember that number, 277, and let's make the volume of the container a lot bigger. So, we'll make it here. So, you can see we have all these particles moving about, these air molecules moving about, but the most important thing is what's going to happen to the number of collisions with the walls. Let's set our timer over the same time interval. Well, there's 149 this time, which means there's less collisions with the walls. And this is how we explain with the kinetic theory what is happening in this gas. When we increase the volume which the air is contained in, then what happens is going to be less collisions with the wall every second. And we can make up a story from this from the kinetic theory. So let's go back to our board. So we start off with our first statement. When the volume of the container increases, then this happens. The molecules will make less collisions per second with the walls of the container. We saw that in a simulation. Now what does this imply then from the kinetic theory? This implies there will be less force applied to the walls of the bottle. Remember, it's the collisions per second that give rise to the force. If there are going to be less collisions per second, there's going to be less force applied to the walls of the bottle. And because we know that pressure is force over area, this results in less pressure on the walls of the bottle.